Hi everyone, this is Ogre Boy, and today I'm doing my review for Fifty Shades Freed. Um, the movie is directed by James Foley, who directed the previous movie, Fifty Shades Darker. And um, this one follows Anastasia and Christian after they get married and they're starting their life together. Um, they also have to deal with uh, Anastasia being stalked by her former boss Jack Hyde who sexually assaulted her in the previous movie. Um, the the cast um, like the first two works about as good as they can. Uh, Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan play Anastasia and Christian and their chemistry still isn't really that good. They don't really seem to like working together. Um, Although it seems like it's gotten better since the first movie, but not not very much. Um, Eric Johnson plays Jack Hyde, the former boss of Anastasia, and he he's the only one that really seems to put any effort into the character. I've seen way better uh, movies where a stalker is played by someone that really makes you think they're crazy. Though he 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 does alright in this one but he's not that great um, Eloise Mumford plays Anastasia's best friend she's she was a pretty big part in the first movie she's not in uh, this one as much as she was in the first one um, I don't remember how much she was in the second one I haven't seen that one in forever um, Rita Ora and Lou Grimes play Christian's brother and sister and they they're all right um, I'm sure that they probably will have way better movies than, during their career later on um, Marcia Gay Harden who I didn't even know was still acting until the first movie came out a few years ago um, plays Christian's mom again and she she does her best with what she's given uh, um, but she's and she's not in this one very much like she was the first the first two especially especially the second one she was in that one a lot the story was not that entertaining I mean none of these movies are really that are really even that good anyway uh, I found the first two to be somewhat entertaining because how bad they are I like watching the movies and making fun of the characters and stuff but this one wasn't the it wasn't very good at all I'm glad it's the last one the characters were, were seemed to be even more unlikable than the first two movies for some reason um, the 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 story was had too much in it. They were packing up, uh, trying to place drama that didn't even need to really be there. Um, the the some of the uh, love scenes were ridiculous and it seemed like they were just tacked in there to be in there. Um, and the There's like this, this one scene with ice cream that is it's just so disgusting and really stupid. Like, how would that even work anyway? Um, there, there was a couple of small appearances from people I didn't expect. Um, one of them is Taylor Hawkland, who was on Seventh Heaven and plays Superman in uh, the CW Supergirl show. I hadn't really seen him in very much until he returned, or until he was on Superman. I hadn't seen him in much in a long time, and I was really surprised that he was in it. Um, he's only in there for a couple of minutes, so. Um, and there's one scene that's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie that uh, features a, uh, Ariel Kebel. I think that's how you say her name. She, uh, she was a. And quite a few movies I liked as a teenager. Um, American Pie 
band camp and um, I think she was in John Tucker Must Die and The Uninvited and then I hadn't seen her in anything in a long time uh, um, and it was really cool to get to see her again and that was probably the only scene in the movie that I really enjoyed watching I was really hoping she would be in it throughout the rest of it but she wasn't um, the movie had three editors and it seemed like the editing was just all like put together really fast it, but maybe it's just because it's just a really bad movie I don't know um, the, the besides the small appearance by Ariel Cabell the only other thing I can really say that I liked about the movie was the cinematography um, jo John Schwartzman did a great job on the cinematography I don't know if he did it for the uh, previous two movies but he did a great job on the cinematography for this one um, it has a lot of beautiful landscapes all three movies really do but this one but and this one had some really not really beautiful scenes um, there were a lot of things I noticed that in this trilogy that were somewhat like uh, Twilight and I think that I, I've heard I don't know if it's true that the author of the books uh, made these as like Twilight fan fiction that somehow got picked up by a publishing company I don't know why but um, yeah, I hated the ending. I, the it's not easy to like an ending when you really don't like the characters to begin with, and they all get to have a big happy ending. Um, they, I, I thought that that was pretty stupid the way they ended it. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers, but. Um, I'll just say it was a unrealistically happy ending to unrealistically dumb movie trilogy. Um, I'll give this movie um, a three out of ten. That's uh, yeah, because it was. It was really boring. It, uh, like I said, the, besides the cinematography and the small appearance by Ariel Cabell, there, I didn't really find anything about it that enjoyable. Uh, even the corny dialogue, which is one of the main reasons I liked the first two, because I like watching it and making fun of it, just wasn't that good. Uh, I normally like bad movies because they're fun to watch, but this one just wasn't. Um, it was just bad. All everything about it—the writing, the acting, the dialogue—it just didn't work. Um, so um, that's my review for Fifty Shades Freed. Um, if there's any more movies you would like me to review, let me know in the comments. Um, uh, thank you, and have a good day.